I don't want to say hood because we didn't like centralize yeah. in the hood, but we were always together. Yeah. So that kind of kept me, um, I wouldn't say out of the gang culture, but more or less, there was a wall between me and just the hood. Hi everyone, this is Rainy Crew with Purpose and Passion. And today, let me tell you, we have Mr. The Therapist, Dr. Taj. And before we start this beautiful interview that's going to be happening, man, there's so many questions I have to ask today. So I want you guys to go to Lux Media and like, comment, and subscribe, all right? This is Purpose and Passion. I'm really excited to have the Hood Therapist in the building, the city of Inglewood. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all good. Yes, all good in the wood. Awesome. Let me tell you, uh, man, I am very, like, inspired by, you know, like, your, your roots, where you come from, and what you're doing now. I remember, Likewise. yes. Likewise. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember uh, watching you with uh, Damien Dash. Oh yeah. It was a late night show, mm -hmm. and it, you know, and my husband's Puerto Rican. Uh, Shout out to him. Yes, he likes your he likes your tattoo. Yeah, for sure. And um, and we were just like sizing you up, like what is he, right? And then all of a sudden, we saw the tattoo. And he was like, he's Boricua, Reina. And I'm all like, oh my gosh, like, wow. So after that, I was intrigued, you yeah, know, because yeah, I love yeah. my Puerto Ricans. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I was, for some odd reason, because I'm mixed, I'm Mexican and Creole, mm -hmm. they were like, you don't look Mexican. So when the Puerto Ricans would come around, I think it was in the 90s when I started getting introduced to them, yeah. um, they were like, hey, you look Puerto Rican. And I'm yeah. like, what the heck? I, I can see that, yeah, for sure. Probably yeah. the Creole. Because um, yes, being Puerto the, the, Rican, yeah. being Puerto Rican is a mix within yes, itself. It is. Uh, yes. I'm at, like if you break down my DNA, I'm um, I'm African, Native American, and Spanish. Wow. Yeah. So that's like my genetic makeup. Yes. You know, my family obviously they're originals from the island. Yes. So uh, I'm a first generation like mainlander or whatever. Yes. You uh huh. Call it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I got I got a uh, a cousin that's a uh, a Puerto half Puerto Rican and when he met my husband Omar, he was like so so I'm like where are you born? He was like I'm I'm born in Caguas, Puerto Rico. And he mm -hmm. was like oh you a motherfucking islander, oh, yeah. you a real so, islander. And I'm so. laughing because I had no idea what that meant, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um so yeah so he 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 was born in Caguas and then he he moved to Southgate in his uh, teen youth, you know like maybe 12, 13 years mm -hmm. old or something, oh, okay. you know. And um, and so for me, since we're going to the journey of Puerto Ricans, why I love me some Puerto Ricans so much, <laughs> mm -hmm. I got introduced to the Puerto Rican festival in the 90s. Oh, yeah, yeah. My uh, the gosh. One yes. And yeah. so what I think we used to have it by, by, man, what is that called? San Dimas. San Dimas. That's yes. what the big ones were back in the yes, day. Yes, that I was back those. in the days, okay? Yeah, I, I went to a couple of those. Yeah, so that's where yeah. I started meeting Puerto Ricans at. And they're so beautiful, beautiful people, beautiful women, handsome men. And so I automatically was just attracted to Puerto Ricans after that. Yeah. And then I remember seeing Fat Joe and, um, and Big Pun pop up to one yeah. of the Puerto Rican festivals. Then my friend Amanda, she's from Hawthorne, and she's Italian and Cuban. So she introduced me to my first uh, Cuban festival, which was like a, around 100 and, 120th area off of Crenshaw in the 90s. And that's where I met Celia Cruz, not even knowing who she was. Oh, wow. wow. Yes. That's legendary right there. Man, and I have wow. the pictures from the, the yeah. Cuban festivals. Yeah. And so something about the Puerto Rican culture, I really love. Like, I, I love their people. I love their food. I love their culture. And yeah. I love their pride. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, yeah. especially like out here in LA. I mean, it's not a, it's not a lot of us, and it, yes. and that's the thing. Like, and if you're with, if you're around, when you won't know a lot of times yes. unless you ask them. Yeah. Because they could, we could pass for like so many different yeah. things. So it's like a lot of times you won't know until you Puerto ask. Rican. Yeah, unless you see the flag and the cold. Yeah. Or, or like a tattoo <laughs> or something like that. You know I, I, mean? I, I told my husband for 2024, yeah. what I'm gonna do is. Uh, if somebody asks me if I'm Puerto Rican, I'm just going to say yes now. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, because I always have the Puerto Rican flag and right. I try to take it down. Right, right, right. Oh, he's like, no, nah, man, you, 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 you yeah, inject it. Yeah, you inject it with yeah, Puerto Rican. So, so you Puerto Rican and you birthed my children. So yeah, yeah so. you Puerto Rican. And I'm, I just bust yeah. up. I'm like, can't get no Puerto Rican than that last name Colon, you know? Yeah, no, for oh, sure. Like, and there's little, like I said, there's little pockets of us like all over the place. Like yes. um, my family moved out here like in the 80s. And, um, you know, I started out in Compton. Mm-hmm. But um, I actually went to school in Gardena, and then I and then I ended up graduating from Hawthorne High School. Actually, ah. so um, I stayed in Hawthorne for a while, for a, for a long time. And um, there were pockets of us in Hawthorne too. Yeah, like we had little blocks and yeah. And shit, Cheo you know? was one of them. I knew Cheo. Yeah, that's what I said. That I, that's I knew Cheo, uh-huh. Pierre. <laughs> yep. All of them. Yeah, those are the homies from like those are some of the first people I met when I came to Hawthorne. Yes, was them, and they're like, oh yeah, we're Puerto Rican too. And I was like, oh for sure. It's a beautiful culture. Yeah. So take the viewers down back memory lane. You know, um, you know, you know, you're obviously Puerto Rican. You're, you're, you know, you're raised here in California, right? Yeah, for the most part. Um, I've I've done some time. Well, not like well, yeah, I've done a little bit of yeah, time. Yeah, it's okay to talk about yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. But I'm not talking about that type <laughs> of time yet. Um, but I lived in New Jersey too for like probably all together, maybe like a year, because uh, my pops is from out there. And they're yes. still out in like New Jersey and Patterson. So shouts out to Patterson. So, yeah. but yeah, I was raised in LA. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, so um, how was your your childhood? You know, how was your childhood? And you know, when when you talked about like being locked up, like what was that experience like? How did you become the hood therapist? You know what I mean? I know you yeah. have a powerful testimony. Nah, for sure. Um, I came up. You know, obviously, um, I'm an '80s baby. Mm-hmm. So I grew up in the nineties, you know, that's when I became of age yes. during the nineties. So I was a little kid walking around in the eighties. Um, and I remember like, obviously the eighties, you know, and the nineties was like big in the gang culture Heck yeah. you know, at that time. So it was like, you really had to watch where you were going. You know, um, I really didn't care until I got, cause you know, when you're like six, seven, you know, you can go pretty much anywhere. Yeah, it's like cause nobody's you're a tripping, kid, you, you know, know what I'm yeah. saying? Plus the way I look, they were like. We don't know what he is anyway, so we're just going to, you know, either that or they would try to bully me. But, you know, the whole light thing, whatever. Yeah. But I definitely proved myself in that realm. But um, just coming up at that time, when I when I hit like, I want to say like eight, probably is when I started having to like know where I was at. Because mm-hmm. by that time, by the time I turned like eight, like it was already like my homies were already like gang banging and, you yeah. know, um, and doing all that and I was kicking it with them a lot you know and at this time um you know I had a lot of family out here at that time like yes. like my family kind of moved out here at the same time yes you know what I mean so I was always surrounded by family mm-hmm. so it was like we were like kind of like our own gang yes like so to speak kind of like how like the Tongans or like yeah. the Samoans uh-huh. are good you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah so it's kind of like we were our own like I don't want to say hood Cause we didn't like centralize yes. in the hood, but we were always together. Yeah. So that kind of kept me, um, I wouldn't say out of the gang culture, but more or less there was a wall between me and just the hood. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I, my family had my back, my cousins, my yes. uncles, whoever, you know, that's what it was. But I was always kicking it with the neighborhood kids. Cause my mom's, you know, she was single. My pops wasn't around, um, pretty much as I was growing up. And so my mom had to work a lot. Mm-hmm. So I was always outside. You know, I was one of those yeah. latchkey kids. I mean, I don't, know if they, I don't know if that's still a term or not. Yeah, it is but, still uh, a term. <laughs> yeah, I was a latchkey kid. And I had the little silver bracelet with my address on it and everything in case I got lost. <laughs> uh, but I was just outside like all the time. Um, so naturally, I learned about the gang culture. And uh, those were my homies. You know, most of the kids that were outside with me were also mm-hmm. kids who didn't have dads or you know, yeah. didn't have supervision, you know, mm-hmm. because their moms or their pops or whoever was watching them at the time were working yeah. or doing their thing, you know, or they were in the hood gangbang. Yes. You know what I mean? So uh, that was like my typical L.A. youth, you know, just coming up around the hood shit, yeah. you know, excuse my language, but no, like, the, okay. yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the gang culture and learning about Bloods, Crips, Essays, yes. and uh, just what's what. And uh, coming up, my, my, my existence was unique. In LA, because again, it wasn't a lot of representation yes. for Puerto Ricans. You know, a lot of times I would be like, "Yeah, I'm Puerto Rican." People would be like, 
Like what's that? What's, what is mm-hmm. that? You know, or is that? Or you're Mexican? Or what is? It? Are you black? What, what is it? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, I'm Spanish and black, and they were just like, what? They never seen somebody like me yeah, before. So uh-huh. that turned into a lot of me fighting a lot. You mm-hmm. know, kind of having to prove myself. Like my homies were actually bullying me um, before they became my homies. <laughs> um, yeah. Once they they found out I could handle myself, then they became like my friends. Yeah. But at first, you know, little kids they don't understand. You know, um, like I'd be walking around, you know, my uncle, I remember my uncle one time gave me a, a, a African, like, like little thing we used to wear back in the days. Like yes. everything was really Afrocentric back then. So like the cross like, color era, right? Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I was wearing like the little African medallion and, um, I would get into it for that. They'd be like, why are you wearing that? Ooh, ooh. And I'm like, I'm black. I'm like, what's black. the problem? You know what I'm <laughs> I don't saying? look black, but I'm mixed I'm, black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you know, so I got into it over that. Just a lot of racial. It was like really racial at that time. Yeah. Even between like the Mexicans and the blacks. Oh, yeah. It was very racial. And, um, you know, not only did I have to worry about, you know. Both sides. Yeah, both sides. You Man. know, yeah. It was crazy. You know, Bloods, Crips, I had to worry about that. But then also I had to worry about the whole racial issue. And I would always get caught up a lot because, um especially as a kid, you know, mm-hmm. I was around everybody. Yes. You know what I mean? And like you mentioned like Cheo. Mm-hmm. Cheo, you know, uh, his family, they they were associated with a lot of the Mexicans at, at yes. this time. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and that's the thing about Puerto Ricans. Like we can go both ways. Yes. You know, like you, when you hit the county, they're like, well, okay, so what are you doing? Yeah. Are you going to roll with the Browns? Yeah. Are you going to roll with the Blacks? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so... Uh, just a lot of a lot of stuff that a lot of people didn't have to go through out here. Yeah. You know, just kind of being in the middle of everything, you know. And then um, as I got older, you know, obviously your friends start picking sides. Yeah. You know, because so like I said, I was to... kicking with every, I was kicking it with everybody, yes. like Mexicans, blacks. It didn't matter to me, you know. Um, but as you get older, depending on who you, you running with, you know, with. who mm-hmm. you running with or who you fluctuating with, you know, people start picking sides. You know that you know you start going to school, you start having racial riots. Yes. You know, don't get locked up. You know, I got I caught my first case, case at twelve. Yes. With Pierre. <laughs> oh, actually. <laughs> Shout out to Pierre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not gonna go into that whole situation because yes. he's like changed his life. Yes, of course. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to like go into all that, but like. Um, I got, we got caught up in some like drug stuff. Yes. You know what I mean? I was hustling at a very young age and I was selling mm-hmm. drugs at a very young yes. age. At 12 years old, I was already like selling multiple drugs. Yes. So, um, I caught that case. I got locked up for a little bit, came back out on house arrest. You know, I did the whole camp thing and all that mm-hmm. and, uh, saw a little bit of the YA and then I came back out, you know, I still graduated eighth grade and, uh, High school, it was on. Like Man. that's when I really started like getting in the streets and the like, 90s. yeah, you know. Yes. And I um, that's when I, you know, you, again, you got to choose sides, and yeah. that's when it got active, you know. And um, so whose side know, did you choose, the, the red or the, the blue? I, I rode with the blacks, and um, uh, I was affiliated with the blue. Okay. You know what I mean? So. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. you know what's so funny when I say that? Did you roll with the red or you roll with the blue? Yeah. Um, because- but shots out. But but again, even at that time, because I was a late bloomer in that. Yes. Even in that, because again, like I was rolling with my family for a long time. Yes. Um. So by the time I started getting more affiliated with like the hood politics, mm-hmm. you know, I was a little older. So I was probably like, I want to say like sixteen. Something like that. When yes. I really started kind of hanging out, like yeah, hanging teenage, out, like you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Years. By then, though, a lot of my friends was already like full fledged, full fledged. Yes. You know what I mean? So, um, but even in that time, I didn't like seclude myself. Like I had blood homies, I had SA partners. Yeah. It was just an understanding. It was just like, oh yeah, when the riot, when the riots pop off, you already know what time you know, it is. What it is. I remember you know? I stopped the first riot at Morningside. They were trying, and then and then it was crazy because obviously I'm mixed. So then I, I I'm rolling with the essays. That's just me. Yeah. So so then the blacks came to. They were like, "Who are you gonna choose?" And I didn't want to say it because the everybody like I was very popular at Morningside. So yeah. I didn't want to say it. So I said the first person that take flight on me, I'm taking flight back. For sure. And then everybody looked like what? Like you know like. Yeah. 
okay? And I said, why are we, why, why is the right going to pop off? I said, Inglewood's had it, Lou Zinger, Hawthorne had it. Like, why do we mm-hmm. have to have a, what is the, why are we having a riot? You know, for what? And then it was a black girl that called the FISA, uh, the W word, wet back. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then that girl called her the N word. Yeah. And then, I was, obviously, I don't speak Spanish, so I had to, had to tell somebody to translate to the little girl, like, you don't say the N-I-G-G-E-R, you don't say that, you, you can't yeah, say that, yeah, because right. that's like fighting words, yeah. and then she said, well, she called me first a wet bag, and I'm like, yeah, and I told the girl, I said, even though it doesn't sound that harsh, but it is disrespectful, you know what yeah. I mean, and so I just told the chick, I said, y'all, y'all tall ass over here wanted to go beat up on this little Faisa girl, I was like, it, it's, it's an unfair fight, so if you fight with her, to catch a fade with her, or whatever you gonna whoop her, and you look like a bully. So, right. so I told the girl, I said, you need to apologize. And so she apologized, and then the the other chick apologized. Who's a basketball player? And um, and that was it. I told him shake hand and keep it moving and learn from their mistakes. And it was crazy because I already had that leadership at that young age. Yeah, yeah. Because That's my cool. thing is, is I did not want to go against the Christian Mafia. At that time, we our neighborhood got along with Christian Mafia. The yeah. 18th Street and Christian Mafia, we got along back then. Yeah, yeah. So we had no problem. But I remember the Bloods were always telling me like, hey, you be all blued up. <laughs> like, you a crip. And I'm like, yeah. I said, well, we ain't got no crips close over here, so I ain't right. trying to be a Blood because I don't like the color red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was like, that was, and that, and that was me. Like, I was more like, I love blue. It's a beautiful yeah. color. <laughs> I, love, I love blue too. I love red. You know what I mean? I look good in red. No, you look good in red because yeah. you very light skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look good in red. I, you know, and at the end of the day, I wasn't, I never looked, I never viewed myself as a natural, like, gangbanger. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was something more I was guilty by association. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Just because those were my friends. Yes. Anyway. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So it was like, I didn't really care about that stuff. Like, I, I cared about it because I had to at a, a certain point. For yes, survival purposes. In the 90s, that's yeah. just what it was. It's just, you was where you were at. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's just what it was. Believing Before Seeing, a new bestseller by Candace Barr. Order your copy today. It was. And, um, you know, but I could safely say, like, I didn't really, like, care about, like, where people were from and shit. Now, mm-hmm. if it was an issue, like, you know, if they were tripping and the homies is tripping, then I'm tripping. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. I never was, you know, with that. You know, and for anybody watching now, I'm not a gang member or gang affiliated. I'm not It affiliated. says healing is gangster, yes. okay? He's on the positive level. Yes. I'm not affiliated <laughs> with any street gangs. No Rico charges over here. Ay, ay, ay. So, so, um, so how did the journey become, you know, going into therapy? Like, that's, that is amazing to me because I'm just like, wow. You know, most of the time, it's always like, like not, I'm not trying to say nerds, but that's all the, the, no, the no, words. Sure. It's like usually, I'm sorry, something is. You don't see some, no, you don't see, you don't see them like, like, like somebody like, that comes from our community. Yeah, we yeah, don't yeah. really see them, you know. So when I saw you on the show, your whole vibe and energy was just like, it's a vibe. And then you're like, and doctor, you know, like tell me about that education, like your education, like once you graduate from high school. Or did you graduate from high yeah, school? Yeah, no, I did. I barely graduated from high school because um, I didn't really go that much, mm-hmm. but I did graduate. Um, the therapy kind of came into my life uh, around the time I was catching those cases uh, yes. when I was young because mm-hmm. my mom was like, oh, I got to do something with them. So uh, my mom tried to like, you know, uh, put me in like therapy. That yes. was like my first time, you know, being exposed to that. Yeah. And... Uh, it was the first time I really got to talk, I think, to somebody like about life, just stuff. right? Yeah, yeah, you life. know, and you know, even at that moment where it didn't like, it might have not helped me at that particular moment. Uh-huh. It, it did because I it was a release, but the seeds that were planted at that time yeah. sprouted much later. You know, where I was like, oh dang, I was doing. I didn't realize what was happening until yeah. I got older and was able to see what I got out of those situations, yeah. you know, again. Um, and then soon after that, I was on my own. I've been on my own since I was like 14, 15 years old. So, wow. uh, yeah. So I, I wasn't even out of school yet when I got on my own, you know, I was like really causing, I was hard to raise. Yeah. Especially when I got into like high school, you know, my mom was finding crack in my pants, yeah. you know, and she was like, I know you're not using this cause you're not stupid. So you must be selling this yes. shit. So, 
you know, my mom wasn't having that, you know, and um, she dealt she with a lot. She was a single mom then. Yeah, well, at the, well, when I when my mom's kicked me out the house, um, she had actually just got married to my step pops. Did you like them? Um, at the time, yeah, I liked them, but I didn't understand them because mm -hmm. um, we came from two different cultures. And you what know was what I mean? he? He's a Jewish man. Oh my! Oh yeah, that's totally yeah different. Yeah. Yeah, my mom's like she married she married a Jewish man, so um, it was a lot of culture clashing going yes. on. And then he lit he moved in the hood, which was crazy. <laughs> I, he didn't understand that that was like the hood when he because you know in L. A. You know whether it's you know like you can go out here in Inglewood or Hawthorne or mm -hmm. Gardena, Compton, yes. any of these places that are here, and. It looks cool. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes, yes. Nice residential areas, yeah. you know, things like that. But, you know, the wrong the, day, yeah, somebody yeah. will come <laughs> rolling and pop, 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 and it's yeah. on, you know? Um, so, he didn't really, I don't think he realized that when he got when he got that crib. And so, it was just a lot of culture clashes going on, a lot of fighting going on, you know? Yeah. And I was just a knucklehead, too. Like, I didn't want to listen to nothing, you know? By the time he came in my life, I wasn't used to having a male figure around. So, yes. I, I, you know, I was like, I don't got to listen to you type of thing. Yeah, you know just, my daddy. Yeah, just that rebellious mm -hmm. phase. But shouts out to him and all the step pops because he tried, you know. And, uh, you know, he, I can actually, uh, you know, credit him probably with me having success in college. Because wow. um, he taught me how to, like, learn. Yes. Like, he would, he would sit there with me and te he taught me, like, how to study. Like, I didn't know any of that. Wow. You know, he taught me, like, you know, this dude was an MIT graduate. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, he was, like, a genius. You know, it was, like, you know? So, um, wow. he taught me, like, how to do school. Like, how to, mm -hmm. like, go about it. And, again, at that time, it didn't really, like, sit with me. But I did learn it. Yes. You know? So, uh, fast forward a little bit. As I'm in high school, and I'm selling drugs. You know, I'm hanging out with celebs at that time already. Yeah. You know, I was kicking it with people like Easy and them. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and um, you know, I got to meet Pac at an early age. And, oh, what an amazing and, you know, opportunity. Uh, kick it with, you know, these people in the studio because the homie Kenny McLeod, shouts out to Kenny McLeod, he had a studio um, over here on Rosecrans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, everybody used to go up in there, like, Quig, Bone Thugs, and Harmony. Like, I don't know how I found out that those people were there. I think I was reading in some credits one day. And it was like, oh, Black Hole Recording Studios. I was like, wait a minute. That's, that's I've been seeing that sign over here on <laughs> Rosecrans. So uh, I got into that real, you know, like kicking it with rappers at a young age, yeah. you know. And um, and at that time, too, I was very affiliated as far as being a hustler. So, I, you know, if you needed it, I had it. Like yes. whether it was drugs, guns, whatever, you know. And uh, all the rappers started like liking me because I was so young, you know. And they just, you know, you see me one time, especially at that time, I looked like a little busy bone. I had a lot of hair. So, um, it's the first of the month. Yeah, I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, you know, you know, that was the only way for me to kind of show my ethnicity, too. It was like, yes. I had my fro out, and it was just like, oh, okay, he's black. All right, but, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I was doing that, just hanging around grown folks, like, just doing too much, you know. So, my mom didn't have it. She kicked me out. I graduated still barely. Um, it's funny because I took like, I took like the SATs, I think mm -hmm. one of those tests and like, I impressed people with some of my scores because yeah. I was very intelligent. I just wasn't motivated in school. Yeah. So I remember my uh, English teacher, shout out to uh, Mr. Sloan. That was his name. He was like, man, you too smart to be failing high school, man. He was like, look, check it out. He was like, we've been reading this book, The Scarlet Letter. Ah, okay. I remember that in high yeah, school. I was like, okay. And he was like, you know, you haven't been to class, but, you know, this is what we've been reading. And he was like, you know, we got this final coming up. And he was like, if you ace this final, I'll pass you. Yes. And that's why I needed that class to graduate. To graduate. You know? Yeah. And so I just read the whole book in like, I don't know, a couple of days probably. Wow. And uh, I ended up acing the final. And, uh, I graduated. Man, what a blessing. Yeah. Graduated high school. Went to Southwest College for like a semester. LA Southwest? Yeah. That's where I graduated from yeah. on my AA I degree. To, yeah. That was the only school I actually survived not getting in a fight. El Camino, they kicked me out there. 
Yeah. And then I got kicked out of LA Trade Tech, then East Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> I went I went I went to Southwest for like a semester though. Like I didn't even go to get educated. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. Oh, I think man. I just wanted to go hang out. My mom forced me to go to college because she was like, if you gonna if you wanna live here rent free, you gotta go to college and have a job. Yeah. So of course I'm gonna listen because I see my friends out there living on their own. Yeah. They, it was hard for them. For sure. So I didn't wanna go through struggle. For sure. I'm a Capricorn. I, I don't like struggle. Yeah, I was already like <laughs> out here like on my own. So I was just like, you know, I think I just wanted to hang out. Yeah. Like I didn't have any educational aspirations or none of that. You know what I mean? I just wanted to kick with the homies. I knew a couple of girls that were going there, and yeah. a bunch of girls actually. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna just go kick it up there during the daytime. I didn't know about financial aid or nothing. Oh so my gosh. Went up there, did it for a semester. I think I took like drama or something like that, some class or whatever. But um ended up doing that, and then I stopped for years. After that, I went full fledged street. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and um I mean, I, it's low key. I'm kind of ashamed to say all that, but no, I was. No, but I was, don't uh, be ashamed. It's a, nah, it's a, yeah, yeah, I was robbing and stealing. Yeah, I was sticking up. I was like a yeah. like a. I know they don't say that much out here, but I was like a stick up kid. Yeah, we remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from the '90s, so yeah, I know what a sure. stick up means. Stick yeah, up. I was a stick up kid. Basically, <laughs> me and the homie was uh going around, you know, taking whatever we could, you know, to yeah. survive. You know, I was having to pay rent, and. Uh, you had to do what you had to do to survive. Yeah, I wasn't, yes. you know, I, you know, people would see my age. They, they didn't want to hire me for jobs. Mm -hmm. um, so I just had to do what I had to do. I had my own apartment, so I had to pay rent. And, uh, yeah, that's what I was doing, uh, just selling selling drugs and stealing. And then, uh, but I was never a thief. Like, that's the one thing. I wasn't a yeah. thief. Like, I never stole from people I knew. Yeah, I know what you, you mean. You know what I mean? Like, never. If I shook your hand, I kicked it with you, I was yeah, going to steal Yeah, it's like, I'm not going to go in your pocket. Yeah, or, and I never, yeah, yeah like, never. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, most of the time when I rob and steal, it was people like myself. Yeah. People that were gang banging or selling drugs or something like that. I can see you know? saying break yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, me and the homie, me and the homie and shit. And I don't even want to say his name because he's, yeah. he's doing a big bid right now. Ooh, we. And I'm sure he doesn't need none of that. So, um, yeah, so that's what I was doing. Uh, was still in the music. I was doing a lot of the music. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I had a lot of musical peers around me. That's kind of like how I built my network for the, what I'm doing right now. Yes. Like if I wasn't doing all that music stuff and even the street shit, because yeah. the street shit endeared me to the music community. Yes. Like the rappers. Yes, you know, very true. I was, you know, I was a dude. I was really living the things either that I was rapping or that they were rapping yes. at the time. So, um, and then I got down with these Jamaican cats. That I'm Caribbean. Yeah. So I, I got with this Caribbean gang, basically. And uh, that's, you know, they they were making uh, millions. That's when I started seeing my first, like, real money, like, in mm, the streets. Yes. Um, I saw them. They were making millions of dollars. <laughs> yes. Millions. And then, of course, the feds came and tore that up. You know, uh, but yeah. And uh, so, so it was I'm a crazy curious. life. So I'm it, curious yeah. because yeah. what did you spend your, like, what was the first thing you bought? Because obviously, if you're working with people making millions, you're making good money. Yeah. So what was the, like, the first thing you bought? Uh, Cars. Like what kind of car? I think it was like the first car I got was a... Well, the first car I ever had was a Honda Civic. It was an 85. Yeah, I'm talking like, about bucket. with your baller people. Yeah, yeah, with the baller. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, was, I still kept the hood. I was like El Dorado. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I remember I used to go to like uh, out there in the AV and like go to the auctions. Yes. And I would go get the like the the bro hands or whatever. So I was still like you know Cadillac Seville. Yeah. And, you know, then eventually I got I got myself like an Expedition when they were like the yes, shit. Yes, they were. Uh, uh -huh. I had the Eddie Bauer. The uh, special edition. Yeah, yeah that, the, that, that, that you was had the, the business. The tape. You could watch the videos in it. Yeah. <laughs> I had that. I had the I Rock. Yeah. Um, then my boss. Uh, who recently just got out yes. because of all this that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. He went to jail back in like 2002. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were like BMF before BMF. Yes. That's how like big we was. Yeah, I and, remember uh, BMF. Yeah, we, we were doing that before that movement. Yes. You know what I mean? And uh, it was a national thing. Uh, this is how I met Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. Was because we had a... Uh, we had a store called Westworld Music on Crenshaw and Slauson, mm -hmm. right next door to the Slauson Tees. Yes. But this is before it was Slauson Tees. Yeah. Nip was like 14 or 15 years old. A baby. And he'd be up there every day. You know, I'm a, I'm I'm, a, I'm I got some years on Nip. I'm a couple years older than Nip, so uh, he would just come around like every day in the parking lot and yes. just be chopping it up. You know what I mean? I don't even think he was fully like 
street street shit. Yeah. He wasn't full fledged in it yet, you know. Um, and I just remember him just asking us all kind of questions because, you know, obviously we were taking a lot of the money we were making and putting it into music. So, yes. uh, my my boss bought every bench on Crenshaw. Every Dang. single one. From Crenshaw and Imperial to Crenshaw and Adams. We had every single bench. Wow. And so everybody was seeing that. Nip saw it and he was coming, you know, yeah, yo, how y'all get all these yes. bitches, you know? And I'm just like, yo, you know, this, this is, the, this is what we're doing, yeah. Yeah, we would press up our own CDs with the barcodes. And since we had a music store, back then, back in them days, the way they counted uh, albums was sound scan. So yeah. we would take our CDs and <laughs> all day we probably had like 50,000 sold from just that one store just Man. all day we sitting there scanning the barcodes you know because we were like set up meetings with the labels yeah. and be like yeah we just sold you know look sound scan says we sold <laughs> you know so um, doing that for a while then obviously the feds came down everything got broke up a lot of people yeah. went to jail I was very young at the time so I was able to kind of not wiggle. go to prison, right? Yeah, I was yeah. able to wiggle through that and not get caught up in, in the Fed yes. part of it. Um, then I was by myself. You know, I remember uh, my boss, I could say his name now because the case is over, G, my boss, uh, G. Um, he was the Jamaican cat I was talking about. Yes. He was the head of the Caribbean art aspect because it was a big national thing. But as far as our side in LA, he was the head of it. And um, he came by one day, he dropped me a bunch of work. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I think he had like $2 million in cash on him. Yeah. And then um, he left and then he got caught up. So I had this work and I just kept flipping, 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 yes. flipping. You know, and then um, I was able to get a studio. Mm-hmm. And then uh, once I got my own studio, I started facilitating like all the new West Coast artists at that time. You know what I mean? Wow. From, you know, I mean, you can name them. They came in my studio. Like, I, yeah. like, like from the Nipsey's to the Kendrick Lamar's. You know, all of the TDE members, really, um, you know, Problems, uh, Rocket, Glasses Malone. Wow. Like, like, you name them, like, they were in my in my studio. Yeah. You know, and then um, I was doing my mixtapes called Hotbox. Uh, I had a mixtape series called Hotbox and Mixtape. And, um, you know, I was getting into Source Magazine. I was doing pretty well. Um, we started going to Aftermath because one of my homies got signed with Aftermath mm-hmm. at that time. So we were over there a lot writing for like detox. Yes. So I got really deep into the music game for a minute. You know, I was in the studio with people like Drake and yes. like all kind of people just being, you know, a lot of people don't know that Drake was writing at Aftermath for a while before oh, he got wow. signed. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that before Wayne picked him up, he was in the studio every day with us. Wow. You know what I mean? That over at Record One. So uh, with a bunch of other people that would come, you know, the biggest of the biggest would be at Record yeah. One just, you know, trying to get on detox. So, um, a good experience, you know, in the midst of all that, um, you know, again, you know, being on the radio and doing all these different things, I caught a weapons charge and, um, that weapon had a body on it. Yes. Yeah. So I ended up getting investigated and they tried to charge me with this body. Yes. Um, and the gun possession, you know, um, I got caught, I was being stupid. I was speeding from Vegas and I got caught up in Barstow. Like on some just driving too fast. Yeah. And they searched, they tore my car up. You know, and they found oh weed, gosh. they found a pistol, all that. And uh, yeah, so I went to jail for a little bit, fighting that case. And while I was sitting in the jail, um, I remember I remember praying. I was just like, well, you know, because they were telling me, you know, that, that, that even before I even went to jail fighting these cases, mm-hmm. like, they picked me up because I bailed out on the gun charge. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But then when they came back with that body, I had to go go back yes. and do that. You know what I mean? So they were actually, I was living in Compton at this time. Mm-hmm. They actually came to my house and like picked me up. You know what so I'm saying? So when you were in jail, that's when the hood therapist came about. Yeah, because I, yeah, because I, like I said, I did a, I prayed and I was just like, yo, you know, I was like, obviously, you know, God, you want me to be here. I'm not going to complain about it. You know, and, it, and and keep in mind, I was a little sick at the time because I really didn't do what they said that I did. Yes, yes, yes. Like, I really didn't do that. Yeah. You know, uh, but I had gotten away with a lot of shit yes. in my life. So I was like, damn, this could be my karma coming. Like, I'm about to go down 25 to life yes. for something I need to do. 
Yes. You know, so I, I was low-key kind of shook. You know, they was trying to get me to tell and all kind of stuff. And I was just like, nah, I'm just going to take me back to my cell. I don't got nothing to say. I was fully prepared to do my time. Yes. And I remember when I said that prayer, I thanked God for being there. Yes. And you that's know? where the transition. That's when the transition the... came. I, and it's crazy because I told all my homies, don't bail me out. Yeah. I told my baby mamas, don't bail me out. Or the mother of my children, I said, don't bail me out. And uh, I said that prayer that night. Like, yo, you know, obviously I'm supposed to learn something here or I'm supposed to reach somebody here. So I'm, yes. I have some kind of purpose of being locked up. And uh, when I said that prayer, it's crazy. The next day, the dude was like, oh, you bailed out. So they bailed me out anyway. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. This is so good. We're going to need a part two. Okay. Yeah. Because we now, because that everything that you shared with me was like, whoa, yeah. like, like went a to movie. School. That's what happened. I went to school. Yeah. I got out. But we're going to do part two because we need to know the process after, you know, that situation, getting, you know, to be a therapist mm-hmm. and the process and how many people you've impacted to make a change. Absolutely. So how can our viewers catch you on social media? Uh, you can go to my Instagram um, at Tajay310. That's um, T-A-J-E 310. Um, you could also check out Healing is Gangsta Official on Instagram. Um Check out healingisgangsta.com if you guys want some of this merch, Healing is Gangsta merch. Yes. Um, it's doing pretty well out there. So shout out to everybody that's bought one and picked one up. Um, obviously, uh, we donate some of the proceeds to like help with like mental health and things like that. Yes, beautiful. So it's a great cause. But yeah, check out healingisgangsta.com. And um, I also own an event space called Projector Space LA where uh, you know we do a lot of events and I shoot Healing is Gangsta there. We do a lot of things for the community there. So. Check Thank, that you. Out too. Thank you so yeah, much for, sure. for coming out on Purpose and Passion. We will be getting our part two because for this sure. was like a freaking movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, until yeah. then, this is Rainy Creole signing out with Lux Media. Bye. Yeah.